Hi, I'm Mrs. D Math, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be going over classifying real numbers in 8th grade math. So in order to understand how to classify real numbers, we need to do a review over rational numbers. And our rational numbers are going to include natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. This is usually shown as a Venn diagram. So with the Venn diagram, you have the inner circle nestled inside of the next larger circle, inside of the next larger circle, inside of the largest circle. So the whole circle is rational numbers. So that means that each level from the inside out are all considered rational numbers. But if they're only in the outer circle, they're only a rational number. And we'll go over this in a little more depth. So we have, first of all, our natural numbers. And our natural numbers here in the middle would be considered our counting numbers. So counting numbers are just one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So all the numbers that you would say if you were to go into a room and just count the number of people that are in the room. Our whole numbers are going to include our counting numbers or natural numbers and the number zero. So zero is included as a whole number, but it is not a natural number. Integers are going to include your whole numbers, your natural numbers, and their opposites. And the opposite of any whole number is going to be a negative of that number. Then we have our rational numbers. Rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a over b, and A and B are integers, and B cannot be zero. So this is gonna include all of your fractions, and we can also write those fractions as decimals. So we have the fraction 1 half, very common fraction. You can write that also as a decimal, and in this case, it would be a terminating decimal because the decimal ends at the number five, which is in the tenths place. It could also include a decimal that repeats. So if I have one and three tenths repeating, that little line over the three indicates that it's repeating forever. That would also be a rational number. Now we do have to address these natural numbers, whole numbers, and integers, which are also all included as a rational number. So if you don't remember how to write a whole number as a fraction, we would just take our whole number, I'm gonna use the number three, and put it over the denominator of one. That turned that into a rational number look as a fraction, but it still equals the same amount three. I could do the same thing with a negative. So I could take my opposite of that, which is a negative three, put it over a denominator of one, and I've accomplished the same thing. So again, all numbers inside the circle. Natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers are all considered rational numbers. These rational numbers are just one part of our real numbers. So again, you have your counting numbers. So we're gonna start with one, two, three, four, and continue counting. We have our whole numbers, which are the counting numbers or natural numbers and zero. Then we have our integers, which include our negative whole numbers. And we have our rational numbers, which are going to be your fractions and your terminating or repeating decimals. Then we have what is considered our irrational numbers. Your irrational numbers are gonna be numbers such as pi, Pi is approximately 3.1415 and continuing. Pi never ends and never repeats. So it continues indefinitely and it does not have a pattern. So that's what makes it an irrational number. Another example of an irrational number would be the square root of three. If you've watched our video on estimating square roots, you know that when we have a square root that's not a perfect square, I'm going to find the perfect squares that come before it and after it. And I can, in this case, estimate what the square root of three would be. And it's gonna be approximately 
0.7. Not exact, but if I were to do this on a calculator, it would continue on indefinitely and it would never repeat or terminate. Another example of an irrational number would be the square root of 11. So really the square root of any number that is not a perfect square. So now we have our rational numbers and we have our irrational numbers. So we can have a set of numbers that are considered rational. We can have a set of numbers that are considered irrational. And all of these numbers fall under the real numbers category. Therefore, irrational numbers are a subset of real numbers and rational numbers are a subset of real numbers. Integers would be considered a subset of rational numbers. So you have your set of numbers, which is your real numbers. That's going to include all numbers. And then you have your subsets. So just to review the Venn diagram, we have these nesting circles and the inner circle is actually included in all the categories that are around it. So natural numbers can also be whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. Whole numbers can also be integers and rational numbers. Integers can also be rational numbers, and rational numbers can only be real numbers. Irrational numbers are over here all by themselves in a subset, so those can only be real numbers. All right, that concludes our video for classifying real numbers in eighth grade math. I'm Mrs. D. Math. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.